Here, we'll work through another example of a type 2 electrolytic cell. Electrolysis of an aqueous solution using unreactive or inert electrodes. We're given that an aqueous solution of nickel 2 sulfate, NiSO4, is electrolyzed using inert platinum electrodes. We have an aqueous solution and inert electrodes, so we know this is a type 2 cell. We can visualize the solution as mobile nickel 2 plus ions, sulfate ions, and a large number of water molecules all moving in the solution. Now we'll make a diagram based on what we have. In the solution we have Ni2 plus ions, sulfate ions, and water molecules. We'll represent the cathode here with a C minus, and the anode here with an A plus. Question A asks us to write the half reaction taking place at the cathode. At the cathode, either nickel 2 plus ions or water will be reduced. Remember, if we have an aqueous solution for the cathode, we use the overpotential arrow on the left side of the table. Any cations above this arrow will be reduced from aqueous solution, but any cations below this arrow will not be reduced from aqueous solution. If these are present, water will be reduced instead. So for the cathode, we use the overpotential arrow on the left, right here. We see that the half reaction for the reduction of nickel 2 plus is higher than this arrow. So the nickel 2 plus will be reduced at the cathode rather than water. And we'll replace the question mark here with a check mark. And we'll make a note up here that this is the half reaction at the cathode. Now we've answered question A. The half reaction at the cathode is Ni2 plus plus 2 electrons gives nickel solid. Question B asks what is the product at the cathode? We can see from the half reaction that the product at the cathode is nickel solid, or nickel metal. The surface of the cathode will gradually get coated with nickel as this process occurs. Question C asks us to write the half reaction at the anode. At the anode, either sulfate ions or water will be oxidized. When we're considering the anode, we go to the right side of the reduction table. In aqueous solutions for the anode half reaction, we use this overpotential arrow on the right. Remember, any anions below this arrow will be oxidized from aqueous solution, but any anions above this arrow will not be oxidized from aqueous solution. If one of these are present, water will be oxidized instead. We see that the sulfate ion is above the overpotential arrow on the right. This means that sulfate will not be oxidized when water is present. Instead, water will be oxidized by the reverse of this half reaction. And this question mark by water can be replaced by a check mark. Because oxidation occurs at the anode, the half reaction on the table has to be reversed. So the half reaction at the anode is H2O gives a half O2 plus 2H plus plus two electrons. So now we have the half reaction at the anode, and it's H2O gives a half O2 gas plus two H plus plus two electrons. Question D asks for the products at the anode. One of the products at the anode is oxygen gas, which we would observe as bubbles forming on the platinum electrode. The other product is H plus ions which would form in the solution surrounding the platinum anode. So now we've answered question D. Question E asks what will happen to the pH near the anode. The H plus ions that are formed will make the solution around the anode acidic, which means the pH near the anode will decrease. So now we've answered question E. The pH near the anode decreases as the cell operates. Question F asks us to write the equation for the overall redox reaction. To do that, we write the half reactions at the cathode and the anode, and add them up. We see that nickel 2 plus gains 2 electrons, and water loses 2 electrons. So electrons lost are equal to electrons gained. So we can cancel 2 electrons from both sides. On the left side, we have 1 Ni2 plus and 1 H2O. And on the right side, we have one Ni solid, half O2 gas, and two H plus ions. So now we have the overall redox equation, and we've answered question F. 
If you check, you'll see that both atoms and charges are balanced.